Welcome everyone. I'm Massimo Crippa and today in this session we talk about API security and the Microsoft Defender for APIs. So uh, it's been uh, more than 10 years that modern APIs uh, are booming, literally booming. And uh, today uh, they also became uh, business critical, for example, to move uh, fast and, and innovate. Mm -hmm to automate business processes, meaning to, to operate efficiently in, in our company and to be, let's say, customer centric. So uh, those modern APIs are literally everywhere. And uh, more uh, APIs, uh, the bigger the attack surface uh, is. Mm -hmm. So when we look at uh, all of this data uh, passing and moving through APIs, uh, we can also understand uh, that uh, we have uh, more and more uh, uh, data breaches, uh, so more uh, um, attacks in uh, in all of these uh, years, and uh, and also as uh, as a social security report says here, uh, APIs became also a, a significant uh, business uh, issues in in the sense that 59% uh, of uh, uh, enterprises uh, experience. Uh, delay in a rollout because of uh, some security issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a very extremely important security for every enterprise. Security became the first concern of every enterprise. Mm -hmm. So when it's about the security, there are mainly the two parts in a DevSecOps cycle. The preventive part, so when you start planning and build and, and before going to production, and then the runtime part uh, when it's about uh, uh, the deploy, uh, operate, and monitoring the workload that we put into production. Mm -hmm. So it all starts with, uh, with threat uh, awareness, mm -hmm. meaning uh, uh, understand uh, uh, what uh, are the potential threats of our workload. Mm -hmm. So using, for example, the stride uh, models uh, uh, to understand which components we have top down, describe them, understand the data flows and security issues when uh, uh, PI is used and so on. So that's the beginning. It's also important to have uh, in our company thread awareness uh, and uh, teach our uh, developers and architect with some uh, secure by design architecture. Then we move on uh, uh, in, the, in the build where there are, for example, uh, uh, static analysis uh, uh, um, tools. Uh, and that's normally what is used the most uh, in, uh, by our developers. Uh, you can lint uh, everything. Uh, you can uh, just do dependency management, uh, credential scanning, and so on. So all of these things are uh, very uh, good practice, uh, especially when you commit uh, your code. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then we move on uh, with uh, the part of, uh, of testing, uh, deploying uh, our, uh, uh, our uh, workload uh, in uh, development acceptance and so on. Over there, we can start using uh, OWASP zip, for example. So to, to test uh, uh, the security against uh, something that has been uh, a workload, that, an application that has been deployed. And then we move on uh, to, um, to production. And, and once uh, we, we are uh, uh, on production, we, we need to operate and monitor uh, our, uh, our workload. So for example, uh, uh, which kind of security patches we want to, uh, uh, we, we have to apply, the access management and, and so on. And then we end up with the workload protection at the end of this uh, uh, post-production security focus. And that's where we want uh, mainly uh, the, the try side that we want to focus today by looking at uh, Defender for Cloud and one of the offering into the Defender for Cloud, in the Defender for Cloud, which is a Defender for APIs. Mm -hmm. So then I was saying, and, and once we start operating uh, uh, our workload, uh, we need a tool uh, to continuously, let's say, assess, uh, secure, and then defend uh, our workload. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, Defender for Cloud gives uh, uh, the, the major tool to, to take care of the DevOps, uh, to take care of our security posture, and then to protect uh, the workload. On top of uh, um, on Defender for Cloud, we, then we have all the integrated insights that are surfaced by the tool. And then we have uh, all the, the integration with, uh, uh, for example, CM, Sentinel, or any other CM you might use. We can leverage then the workflow, auto, workflow sorry, automation to, uh, let's say, manage the, the security recommendation that has been surfaced. We can create security workbook and, and so on. So, 
that's mainly the, the integration at the bottom. So this is the Defender uh, family. We will uh, look in the detail Defender for APIs uh, for uh, runtime security in API uh, workload, which mean which allow us to discover the API that we have, understand the, the catalog of the API catalog and their security posture. We can uh, put in place security control uh, to protect uh, uh, the, our configuration. We can detect uh, the detect the suspicious behavior by analyzing the traffic. And then we can uh, surface uh, uh, the recommendation uh, to our uh, security team. So how this uh, Defender for API works? Basically, by just uh, uh, enabling, uh, uh, by just one, uh, one click in the, for example, in the Azure portal, we can transparently mirror all the traffic to the Defender for API backend. So you can imagine over there, the request is flying through the API management, reaching the backend. And then in the middle, the, the traffic is forward. So request, the body, the headers, the context of this call is forward to the um, Defender for API backend. Same way on the channel back when we receive the response, that response is, uh, is logged, is forwarded to the Defender API. So the Defender can implement that uh, API security postures checks, but it can also implement that uh, uh, advanced threat protection, meaning using a machine learning based detection to continuously assess the uh, if uh, uh, the workload, uh, if our traffic is, uh, uh, is protected, is secure, and this uh, uh, advanced threat protection implement checks uh, towards the, the OWASP API top 10 uh, threat. So let's go to a little bit more in details and, and see what we, we learn by using uh, this tool. So let's make it practical. So, but first, how to enable it? Very simple, you go uh, on, uh, on the Defender, on your environment, and you can enable the Defender plan by just uh, uh, plugging it to, to on. Then you have to search uh, in the recommendation your uh, API management instances. You can uh, uh, enable one or more instances, and within that instances, you can define, decide which kind of APIs you want to onboard, one or more, depending where you want to focus your uh, um, analysis. And then once the, the tool is onboarded, once your uh, one or more API management, management instances are onboarded, you can then analyze and, uh, and see the results that are surfaced. Now, let's... Uh, uh, Let's see what we experience, our experience with the tool. So we just uh, enabled the tool on, on uh, one of our, uh, on this scenario. Uh, so uh, we enabled the tool for, uh, for seven weeks, but here we are looking at uh, uh, the traffic, uh, uh, monthly traffic. So there were, we observed more than 400 million uh, calls uh, per, uh, per month, meaning uh, uh, 1.6, uh, um, 1,600 calls per second when we have the peak because the traffic is really depending hours by hours, so less uh, out of the business uh, hours. We had uh, uh, traffic for more than 60 countries, and we had uh, uh, around uh, uh, 5 million distinct uh, IP addresses. That's just to give you the idea of the kind of traffic. What did we learn? One of the things is like uh, uh, very important uh, is about security posture is to classify our workload. If you look at this research, this Palo Alto report, 94% of organization believe that it's critical to understand which APIs are exposing sensitive data and which not. In this case, Defender Group API creates a, a list of endpoint, categorize, identify which endpoint is secured with authentication which not, and then here you see on the right, some example of classification. Suppose that you have, uh, you're exposing uh, uh, some specific uh, uh, personal information in a non-authenticated uh, endpoint, uh, that's, uh, let's say, very bad, it's something that uh, you really have to uh, take action first. And then also uh, by understanding the data classification, you can, uh, you can uh, first understand, uh, uh, is this critical? Uh, was it this intentional to, to expose this information, yes or no? In our case, everything was, uh, uh, was as, it, as it should, so we were very happy 
to analyze our traffic, classify your traffic, but also see that was uh, according to our expectation. Another uh, uh, thing that uh, um, the defender does is uh, to check security misconfiguration. Hmm? The, the, the most, the second most common uh, mis uh, OWASP top 10 attack is because of misconfigured API. In this case, the defender goes and check your Azure API management and uh, surface some uh, security, uh, does some security check and uh, come back to you with some security assessment. Here you see on the right uh, the kind of uh, check, uh, an example of checks that are done. Uh, in our case, uh, um, we were compliant, uh, let's say, with 90% of the check. One of the things that we, we added uh, thanks to this assessment was the minimum version of API management, which I believe is a very good practice. Then we move on with something like more uh, threat protection, meaning uh, uh, machine learning based uh, control. In this case, uh, we detected the spike uh, uh, of API requests to a single endpoint. So we move, uh, for example, from 70, 70 call every 20 minutes. That is mainly, that is really nothing. At a certain point in time, it has been detected to a traffic of 865 per, uh, per 20 minutes, which is also not so much uh, for our traffic. But uh, uh, yeah, it was um, this was this, uh, this alert was surfaced, so we analyzed it uh, and we realized that in this case it was a, a legitimate traffic because uh, in that period of time we enabled a specific promotion and then uh, uh, some accounts were updated to get uh, that promotion. But in general, uh, this kind of uh, scenario it helps us to to find if there are some broken user level authentication or. Uh, there is some uh, uh, lacking in uh, in a rate limiting on a specific operation or on some specific uh, operation plus uh, uh, consumers uh, and other kind of uh, uh, throttling key. Another example was uh, um, was uh, um, in this case is the enumeration through parameters. So a specific parameter was called uh, normally on average. Uh, 1,000 time per 20 minutes, and it moved to 20,000, which is uh, huge. Huh? But in this case, also was uh, was uh, um, in our uh, uh, example, uh, it was a legitimate traffic. Why? Because you can imagine uh, this was a sort of uh, is a path parameter, right? So you can imagine that it was a sort of session parameter. Hmm? So a session in that uh, amount of time. I mean, during that event, that promotion more users were uh, accessing to the platform, more, more users were interacting, and more distinct session was, was created. But the same kind of uh, detection for other type of parameters uh, would be uh, quite heavy, critical uh, signal, uh, quite critical security issues uh, that could lead to some uh, broken uh, object level authentication. Uh, another example of, uh, uh, of um, Insight that we can have uh, um, with Defender for API is the one that are powered by the Microsoft Threat Intelligence. In this case, it can uh, uh, surface uh, IP that has been uh, associated with some malicious activities. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, um, you could uh, uh, we, we react by going and analyzing this uh, high level, uh, I, high suspected uh, IP addresses. Uh, and uh, decide whether to implement additional throttling on this. Uh, let's say that also this kind of uh, of uh, um, of uh, um, threat is even more important if it's combined with a suspicious spike coming from that IP that is uh, that is marked as threat. So we combine the the threat intelligence with the machine learning to fine tune our action, our workflow, uh, security workflow that are coming later. So there are different multiple uh, uh, multiple scenarios that are surfaced by Defender for APIs. Here you can see a list, but there is more. Uh, we just only see uh, saw a few of uh, of them. Now, if you look at the business model, how much does it cost, or at least how much was costing for us? In our case, uh, here is uh, the, the the business model is uh, you pay per pack uh, per month, and plus you pay for average uh, average per transaction. Mm -hmm. In our case, we were having 400 millions, 
So we pay $7,000 for the first 100 million calls and then other $7,000 for every million calls. So a total per month of $28,000. So quite a price, but okay, it all depends on the benefit that the tool brings to you. Uh, one more thing is about uh, uh, GDPR. So I'm based in Europe. Our customers are mainly uh, European based. So over there, um, all the data that is moved to the backend of uh, um, Defender for API stays uh, in your geographical boundaries. So in Europe, mm. so IP address are retained for 30 days, but all the bodies only for 48 hours. So um, Defender for API also uh, does honor the GDPR requirements, so you can export, uh, uh, ask to export uh, um, the request for the data that has retained more than 48, 48 hours, in this case, only IP address. And uh, nothing uh, of personal data is, uh, is retained for more than 48 hours, so everything is, uh, let's say, under control for, uh, for GDPR uh, point of view. With this one, it's uh, it's everything for uh, for today. So thank you for uh, following this session. Have a nice day.